Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? I'm singing to music you can't hear. There's the music. How's everyone doing today? It is Tuesday. No, no, no. It's Friday. How's everyone doing today? Nice, exciting Friday. We've got ourselves an IDEX. I'm running out of desk room. I need I need a bigger desk. Printers are getting too big. Disregard bed space. And embrace tiny. Tinicity. Tinity. Embrace the small. Need more small printers, please. More small printers. I'm I forgot to charge the audio. The the lav, so hopefully I don't go too far today. Get yanked. Ah, Freaky Friday. It's not Freaky Friday. Just Friday the 15th. What is a Freaky Friday? I don't know. Uh, don't do that. Maybe I think I need to go back to work. Yeah. Yeah, no work. Work is good. Ah, ba -ba -ba -ba. How's everyone doing? Just check it on. What's going on? Cool, cool. Camera's doing the shit. Anything? It is. Cool. One second. Let me push the button. Okay, bye. There you go. Turn it back on. Normally I catch it. it. It does it like one out of every 10 times I turn the camera on, it does that. So I don't know why it does that. Um, there we go. Okay. So uh, today, uh, first things first, uh, make sure you enter for your chance to win a spool of filament from Polymaker. We give away a spool every stream. Link in the description. We do the draw at the end of the stream. Uh, and yes, the stream went live later than normal normally i like to have the pre-stream uh up about two to four hours early today was like an hour hour and a half um it's because i lost track of time because i was in the garage working on all this the mandalorian stuff so uh yeah but the big show today is this guy this is the saval sv04 um it is an idex printer it's a bed flinger uh links in the description if you want to know more about it um there's a picture of it. And here's the website. So it's uh, 300 by 300 by 400, auto bed leveling, silent board, the whole shebang. That's pretty much spec now on most printers. Uh, and it's an IDEX. So that means it's got two tool heads. Not one, not three, but two. Um, so that means we can do multi-material because you know we don't have cross-contamination risks. Although it is not enclosed. Um, so you're gonna be limited to PLA, PETG, um, TPU stuff that you don't need to print in close, which is kind of the downside of a printer like this because usually these printers are quite large. Um, so enclosing them can be a little bit of a problem, but most people don't print uh, ABS. So it is what it is. Any quick tips for t running wiring through drag chains completely? Uh, get drag chains, you can open them up. So, got something. Got something. So, um, before we dive into this, the usual YouTube spiel, uh, this printer was provided by Soval for the purposes of this live stream and potential review. Words and opinions are my own. I'm not being paid for this. I'm under no contract. I can say whatever I want. Purple Monkey Dishwasher. So, this is the SV04. Links in the description if you want to know more about it. If you want to get one yourself, uh, you can get it on Amazon as well. Um, but it's 300 by 300 by 400. It is a bed flinger. Uh, it is IDEX. It is direct drive. So it's a direct feed tool head. Um, with IDEX, you have the ability to do different things. You could do like single, you just print it normally. Uh, dual color, dual material stuff. You can mirror stuff. So you can print uh, left and right hand versions of something, or you could duplicate. So you can print um, two of the exact same thing. So if you're doing, you know, production and you can't afford two printers, maybe one of these, but you lose like half the bed. Um, am I printing the shoes? Probably not. So um, this machine isn't a brand new machine. I know others have done reviews on it. It's not a brand, brand new machine, uh, but I've kind of avoided looking at other reviews. Like I try to do that uh, for initial impressions of the machine. Um, it says it could do ASA and ABS. So do many times you're capable of producing high quality prints. So we got to see if it is all metal. Um, I believe Titans are all metal, if I'm not mistaken. I gotta double check that, it's been a while. 
Uh, I have a fever and I'm dying, dude. Go go see a doctor. Um, 32 bits, TMC 2209. Um, I'm bored. Up to seven additional drivers? What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got X, Y, Z, extruder one, extruder two. Okay, I guess there, there's room to expand if you want, I guess. Um, X, Y, Z, and two extruders. Okay, whatever. Uh, run out sensors, dual Z, flexible plates. You, you, you know how it is. Um, large SD card. Ooh. So, is it dual Z? It's dual Z, but it's running Marlin, so I'm assuming it doesn't do any fancy tramming. That would be really nice. Maybe it does. We'll find out. Um, what is a doctor? It's a thing you go to when you're sick. It's a person you go see when you're sick. A hospital is a big building full of sick people, but that's not important right now. Eh. Okay. So, this is a big box. Ourselves a manual. Well, SV04. Uh, correct voltage, do not wear gloves or loose fitting clothing, clean the printer frequently, yada, yada, yada. So it looks like it's a pretty simple assembly. You got a base, a gantry, they just kind of plop together, you screw them together. Bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. These printers are usually pretty easy to put together. So we will follow the manual. For those that don't know, um, or don't know how I do these unboxings, um, I, I, you know, not to shoot my own horn, but I've built many a printer in my time. But when it comes to unboxing and setting up printers, I go by what the manual says. If the manual says don't grease, I don't grease. If the manual says put it together a certain way, I put it together a certain way. Because not everyone builds printers all the time. So you kind of have to look at it from somebody who doesn't know. First IDEX. No, um, I've actually, I have an IDEX already. It's the... Ah, shoot. What's it called? Uh, not a Mingda. It's a company that, that like, uh, I have an IDEX, but it, it's not very good. Okay, what do we got in here? We got, um, okay, that. We got some spools, more of these little quarter kilogram spools. I'm collecting these. I don't know why, what I'm going to do with them, but I've got a bunch of them. JG Maker Artist D Pro. That's what it is. Um, it's okay. It works, but it's not the greatest. Hey, we got our uh, our poop collection buckets. There, nope. That was a box of goodies. Yep. What else? Get ourselves the screen. Um, touch screen of some sort, I'm assuming. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of touch screens, but it is what it is. I, I, I prefer tactile feedback. If I'm sitting there watching a first layer go down, I want to be able to see the first layer go down and be able to like push buttons and not have to constantly look at a screen. More foam for the garbage. The extruders, yeah. Mine worked okay. Like I did a review on it and it wasn't too bad. And then I saw all of a sudden I got an issue with it and then it just went to shit. Plus I don't really print a lot of not enclosed stuff. So here's our gantry. Um, it's 2040 V slot. This, this is a V wheel machine. Um, there is some machining on these. So we'll come back to those in a bit. Get it all out. Anything down here? Nope. Oh. Um. That's a spring, and that came out of something. The bed's not attached. Okay. Was this supposed to be attached? Okay. Um, am I missing a wheel? Was the bed supposed to be attached? 
I'm, I'm hopefully the wheels under there somewhere. I've only got three wheels. Um, okay. I, I don't think, I don't know how a wheel could spin off during shipping, but I'm also missing a spring. So, well, we'll get this out. Take a look. Um, it does have a flex plate. Um, it is textured. I don't think it's PEI. Might be, it might be black textured PEI. I don't know. And then blank on the other side. So we do got a flex plate. Okay, that I'm a little concerned about now. So we've got these. Um, oh, there's another spring. I'm a little concerned that. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, let's see here. We've got that, that, that. There's the three springs. There's that. Um, I've got a wheel. I got a clip that goes on top of this. Let's see. Okay, why were these not attached? Take it from the. Why were these not attached? I'm a little confused. We're gonna, I'm gonna put them on. I'm gonna reference the manual and see if the manual says anything about that. If not, somebody goofed and that's already a ding against it. Uh, it's a PCB bed heater board. It's got the, uh, the little insulation under it to kind of help stuff stick together, I guess. Flip popped off. Okay. A little concerned. Okay. Must have been rough on shipping that. I I I don't know. This is weird. I, I I don't know why these wouldn't be attached. Okay, so while, I, while I'm screwing around with these, if you haven't had your chance to enter for the draw to win some uh, Polymaker filament, go enter and do that now. Link in the description. While you're down there, don't forget to like the Hit the smash button, like the stream, become a member of the channel. If you want to help out the channel, links in the description. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just feeling dead air while I uh, put this printer back together that somehow um, all the bed screws came loose during shipping. The gremlin something? The shop? Um, it, It's stream elements. I, I, I don't know. I know it works for some people. It's stream elements. I can look into it, but I'm not too sure. Are you done printing the Mando costume? Technically, I had everything printed a while ago, but, um, or like end of last week or earlier this week, I can't remember, but I reprinted a bunch of parts for the, uh, the heavy infantry Mando costume because I wasn't happy with the fit of a few things. I wanted stuff to be a little bit more snug. So I, uh, I reprinted a bunch of stuff. Misadventures in plastic, melting plastic, $10. Cheers. Hey, Doc. Yeah, Um, I'm assuming it's not supposed to be like that. Okay, so we got the bed on. Got that there, got that there. It's facing away from me. Before we go further. Let's open it up. See what we got under the hood here. Because that's one thing I like to do. Is I like to check on 
wiring and whatnot under the hood to see what we're working with. And the fact that uh, I've had uh, to do some extra assembly already leaves me a little concerned. Can you check the flatness? It's got a bed probe. The bed probe will take care of the flatness issue. Three point bed leveling call. It's a floating bed. It's a free floated bed. You don't have to worry about it. Am I able to use two AMSs with the bamboo? No, I don't have the hub. You need a hub so that they can talk to each other, or they link together. I don't have the hub, so I can't do that. Okay, so it is set for 2.30, so I gotta fix that. So let me just uh, get in there with something to do and fix that. So you can get at it from the outside. Um, we have crimp connectors on the wires going into the power supply. Um, I do like to see grommets for the wires going through. No grommet there, but it's not really issue um what's this ribbon cable go okay so these ribbon cables there's two ribbon cables that go to the tool heads i'm not a huge fan of ribbon cables it makes adding and changing stuff a pain but it is what it is um we got one two three four five six seven steppers but there's only two stepper plugs available it looks like Focus, focus on my hands, focus on that. So, um, you got Z1, Z2. Are, are those both Zs? Where do these go? I don't know where they go. Yeah, so actually, what we got here? Z, Z. We got two Zs, so that both Zs are on the same. Or no, the Y. No, yeah, these are tied together. And where is the other one? Oh, there it is. Okay. Z2. I don't know. I'm just trying to see what we have here. So that one is that. So Z2. What's the other one? Z1. Y. Okay, so the, the Z motors are on separate drivers. The Y motor is on its own driver. And then we got X and then two extruders. So we got like a free motor. Oh, well. We got a little blower to keep it all cool. Power supply is a generic no-name brand. I guarantee you these wires are tinned. They always are. Okay, I don't see anything that I'm too like freaked out about. It is grounded. All these are glued. It's the same construction you see of every Made in China printer. Oh, I guarantee, oh, they're tinned. I guarantee you they're tinned. They're, they go straight in. So for those that don't know why they're tinned, okay? It's a manufacturing method. You don't have, you know, as cheap as labor is in, you know, some places like Shenzhen, it's not economical to have some guy sitting there and cutting all your wires by hand and putting, you know, connectors on them. So it's all done by a machine. So there's just a machine that sits there that cuts wires to X length and then it strips the end and then it just dips them in a tin bath quickly. And there's all your pre-made wires for everything. That's what they use. And it does work. It's not the preferred method because you have the it, the risk if uh, the connection heat cycles a bunch, the wire can get loose. It, it's not the preferred method, but it's, it is a method. In the hierarchy of ways to do a wire connector, you know, I'd, I'd rather have a ferrule there. 
but it is a method. And the reason they tin them is so that way they don't fray. So you can just have somebody there quickly throwing them in when you're building these by the hundreds, right? In an assembly line. So that's why they do it. Bed of liquid ferals instead. <laughs> Okay, we got full travel. Um, we do have tensioning at the front. Okay, let's put this thing together. Oh, there's enough air movement, don't worry. Remember, people, look how small the back of a V0 is and you don't have to worry. There is enough open air, you just got one fan, you're fine. People, honestly, I think some people are like paranoid of how hot electronics can actually get. Remember, your computer CPU can run at like 100 degrees almost all day, every day, and it's perfectly fine. Like, electronics at 50C are fine. Like, you can get your electronics quite warm before it's actually an issue. Stepper motors. Good ones are rated to like almost 100C before you even have issues. So you're more likely to melt your, your mount before anything. So people who put like heat sinks on steppers that you can touch by hand, it's a waste. Properly designed and rated electronics. I don't like this. This really. I, I don't like their wire up. There we go. Let's wrap our Y umbilical around our Y motor. Okay. So, according to the manual, there was nothing about attaching the bed. So, yeah, that's a goof. That's a goof on their part. Hey, another C14. Got a million of those. That, that, spool holder, spool holder, screws. We got a USB-C? No, mini. For a second, I'm like, USB-C? Really? Another spatula? Where are you? Where are you? I know you're in here. I need another one. Ah, there we go. There you are. This will make a fine addition to my collection. Add it to the pile. I swear, by, by the time, you know, if I do this for another year or two, I'll be able to open up my own online store just selling these little snippers because I'll have so many of them by then. Better spool holder? I don't know, I haven't got a spool holder yet, but they, they're Ender style spool holders, so. Okay, gantry assembly. On the gantry frame, make sure the nozzle assembly is to the front and the long vertical lead screw is to the back. On the base frame, make sure the belt cover is to the front. Okay. So M570. Ooh. But will it blend? That is the question. So we've got our bolts that hold it all together. They've all got uh, washers on them. Did you give me Allen keys to put this together? You did. And they gave you the little pokey thing that everyone stabs himself with. You got one pair of side cutters. What are you doing with your life? Look at yourself in the mirror. What is going on? Okay, so it looks like they did like machine some grooves here. And then it's tapped right into the aluminum. So, oh my God, this thing's massive. Well, that's a great, uh, hopefully it lines up.
How long do we need our bolts to be? Yes. Pokey thing. Oh, the pokey thing. For those that don't know, a lot of these uh, printers, they come with a little pokey thing to clean your nozzle. And if you don't know it's in there and you go to like collapse up all the garbage bags, like all these little bags to throw them away, you'll stab yourself. I've done it like almost every time I build one of these printers. The acupuncture needles. Is that, are they, they probably are legit just acupuncture. I am liking the, the, the machine plates. It is V-Wheel. It do be how it is, though. Uh, your Zed does have um, uh, the, the, the tension or the slack remover nuts, the, uh, the spring-loaded nuts there to kind of make them a little bit more to preload it, but it's on the Zed. So gravity does your preload, but whatever. Or they could have used like the longest bolts in the world here. This thing is massive. So on the bright side, no matter what, I get another spr uh, spring steel sheet. That's good. You can never have too many spring steel sheets. And apparently I'm supposed to, somebody mentioned online, I'm supposed to uh, update the firmware right away on this. So we'll see. Okay, so I don't like this. I don't like that. So let's, uh, I'm going to use something that's most, you should have, if you're serious about building printers, a, a machinist square. They're not that expensive. Is this perfect? No, but it'd be better than just eyeballing it. Hey Steve, how you doing? Okay, so we got that. Apparently there's some caps put under the bottom of these. Good enough. Okay, I'm assuming that connects to that. So there's a short and a long Z wire. I'm assuming the long one goes to the far one and the short goes to the short. Put that in. That. What are these wires for? I don't know what these wires are for. What are these wires for? Filament detector. Oh, filament detector. Okay. Uh, get on. Thank you for coming to member. A little bit extra wire there, but yeah, well, it is what it is. Okay. That is that. That is that. 
No angled strut braces? No, it's relatively stable. Remember, it's not like it's waving. If you move your bed fast enough, the whole, it'll cause the whole thing to shake, but. Okay. That probably put my whole uh, squareness out of square, but. Okay, so we got that. Put our filament detectors up top. There is a front door mod for the people who are like Eddie. Um, yeah, it probably just use his door and just size it for your frame, I guess. Probably be the easiest way. I don't really like follow a lot of the mods. Like I, I don't go hunting mods down usually. So if you ask me a question about some of the mods, unless it's like a very common one, I may not even know about it. Okay, I'm using the ball. Oh, geez. Why should I have a wider extrusion? 2040. Okay. So that goes there. It's the same. Oh, they are the same. Okay, so yeah, let's put you there. Okay. So that didn't work. No, I put a chunk out of my chili. Not too bad. There. I hate hammerheads. Like, I'm not gonna turn. Needs braces. Lisa needs braces? Dennis, gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Yeah, th these are your standard Ender style um, school holders. Nothing too fancy. They work. They get the job done. Better than the ones that come with the V400. of everything. There we go. There we go. Building an ender? Yes, this is an ender.
detector. Detector. Okay, I'm assuming this cable goes here. So these cables do snap in. It looks like they got Yeah, you can see they do have a little so they're they're IDE cables basically and they do have locking tabs so that's good to see that they have locking tabs I like seeing that and there is a little breakout PCB in here um, Oh, one of the extrusion caps? Nah. Oh no, it has. Mm. Well, I don't have one. So it's missing an extrusion cap. Yep. It's straight up missing one. Okay. Okay, so that's on, that's on, display screen attaches to, oh, no, no, it does, it's not missing one. The screen attaches to the front, like that. Yeah, the screen covers it, it's not missing. So it's attached. Ooh, there is not a lot of clearance from that bed. Like, yeah, it, it, it's close. Okay. So display screen, connect, 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 connect. That part is connected. It is connected. That's connected, that's connected, that's connected. Uh, that's connected. That switch is connected. How tight are these belts? This is kind of giving me the heebies. It's just flopping out like that. Oh well. Okay. That's yeah, so fine. But it uses optical end stops for the uh, the x-axis, both x-axis. And you can't adjust this one. So this is the one that has your your BL touch or whatever knockoff BL touch. Um, this one is a dumb one, so it's got no Z detector, but it's got a little, it's got springs and screws, so you can adjust its offset. Okay. Try not to bend the pins. Okay. Caution, do not disconnect. Okay. Power cord. Okay. Make two adjustment pieces to parallel the z-axis. What? Seriously? Okay. 
it gives you these two little pieces so that you can square up your your gantry like you put them on the side there and you come down to like it touches both but you need to be on a flat surface for this and um this is too big for my granite table so uh yolo okay let's give it some power Yeah, the, the Artist D doesn't have this. That was a big problem that I had with the Artist D was basically just... It worked fine as a single extruder, but the moment I tried actually doing dual extrusion, it kind of went to shit. How do I plug this bitch in? On the, that side. Okay, that's annoying. Okay, three, two, one. Power! It's got loud fans. So that's kind of annoying that it's on the side, but it's what it is. Okay. So settings, move the extruder one to the center of the beds and adjust. Okay. So settings, leveling, okay, so it's homing. So it went all the way up, it ran to the top, that one. On the bed. Yay! Now, unfortunately, again, remember my my V four hundred didn't come with a whole stack of paper, so I gotta use some real paper here. I'll do. Okay. So, move the extruder to the center bed, then adjust the distance between the nozzle and the glass bed. It's like settings, leveling home. Okay. So, first off. Manual is saying glass bed. You read the manual, it says glass bed. This is not a glass bed. And this is another thing I don't like is I can't. Save. Put a piece of paper and adjust until the nozzle scratches the paper slightly. Okay. Select settings, leveling, aux setting. Okay. Aux leveling.
Going the wrong way. Uh, good old manual bed leveling. Maybe you could transfer the X-Rail the RSD to this. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably fine. Like, I'm not... Let's be honest, these printers are just for, you know, testing and review. And so others can see how these printers perform. And, uh, okay. switch to nozzle two, select aux leveling, press number one. Okay, so let's Ooh, I don't like that. That could get caught. Okay. So now I got to move the tension. Oh, that. Okay. So that is that. Settings, leveling, leveling. Okay. No one cares about bed slingers, or even using the cheap serif font, all Chinese. We want more bamboo. It's right there. The bamboo, it's Core XY and close printer goes fast. This is something new. I don't play with IDEX a lot. I'm going to be building one in the future, so I want to have some fun learning about this. Oh, yeah, it feels so much more solid than the Artist D. That's for sure. Leveling. Okay, there we go. So it's doing the bed mesh now. Uh, question is, what colors does use for testing the IDEX with? I don't know. You guys pick some colors. We need some colors here. Oh, actually, um, I need to get more Polymaker. Because, like, this, I give away a Polymaker school, but I don't have a lot of Polymaker PLA. But I do have... Um, Oh, shoot, I don't even have that stuff. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Well, I don't even know. Let's wait. Let's see what we have on the SD card for a demo. And uh, we'll, we'll go from that. Just message Nick how many spools Sparta 3D color. Um, I do have Sparta 3D. Sparta 3D sent me... We got orange. We got silk green. Let's do, or actually, no. I don't want to do pearl. Dang it. I don't want to do pearl. Silk and orange. I want to use regular filament. Like, we could use the stuff they sent. Like, I got white and blue. You need a wall like Polymaker? I don't like, like, fully depending on companies, though, to support my uh, filament addiction. Let's, okay, we're going to wait and see what models we have on the SD card. And then we'll you we'll make it aside. Waste the green bamboo filament. Good idea. Okay, so one of them is gonna be green. Bed slingers. Oh my god, bed slingers are the past. Everyone tell every CNC machine that has a moving bed that can move twenty thousand pounds that they're obsolete. Bed slingers serve a perfectly good valid purpose. They're extremely simple and they're very cost effective. 
this big. This is as big as I would ever go with a bed flinger, like honestly. Because the problem is 3D printers are built cheap. Right? So you you're you're missing some stuff there. Okay, save. Okay. So that is all that. So prepare. Okay, so let's move. Where is move? Settings, level, move. So I got to put the poop buckets on. I don't have the poop buckets on. I don't know how to put the poop buckets on. You? No, no, I don't want you to home. No, wait, why are you homing? Oh! I know why you're homing. Because you're dumb. Where's the power button? Because you can't have both out in the open when it's on. Show us the wall of filament. It's over there. So we do have a wiper with this one. That was a, a problem the artist D had was the purge buckets were not in a great spot, so you had to like print an aftermarket, like an, a modified one to use it properly, and then it didn't really have good wipers. So that was an issue. There we go. Okay. Where is the SD card? Let's put the SD card in and see what we got. Oh, I got a little filament. Well, first, let's see what we got. I've worked on an XY bed flinger for... Yeah, I, I worked in a tool shop. We had, you know, massive CNC machines. Okay, print. Does it not have, oh, okay. Mirror, mirror, dual XYZ QPLA, dual Blink Fox. Okay, we'll do the Blink Fox. Everyone likes the Blink Fox. Yeah. So we'll do we'll do green and what, what goes good with green? We're gonna do the Blink Fox. For those that don't know what the Blink Fox is, it, it's, it's a little cute little fox. And yeah, I'll do a PLA and PTG with this. Okay, temp is one. PLA. So uh, green and purple. Ooh, green and purple. That'll be cool. Okay, so we got green. I have purple. I know I have purple. No, I have purple. Aha! I do have purple. We've got some. No, that's pet G. Oh, Jesse. There we go. There we go. So we got green and purple. Now we're going to do green and purple. Yeah. So we're waiting on these to heat up so I can put some filament in them. Do you plan on leveling the top of the Z lead screw constrained? Please leave those. Are they constrained? They are. I, I'm I'm leaving the machine as is. We are testing the machine as it comes out of the box. That's how I do this. Lube the screws. Doesn't come with lube. It doesn't say to lube it. You run it how it's brung. So we got green. This is whatever billion freaking rolls of green PLA I got from bamboo. So we're gonna go through the filament thing. Let's 
kind of annoying because you've got to go through these bearings. Purple. I can't get it to go through the thing. It won't. It won't go through the filament. Uh, back here. There we go. Okay, so uh, print, dual blink fox PLA, print. Are you sure not to start the print in current print mode? Dual mode, yes. So I'm gonna wait for the bed to heat up. cut filament hit the floor oh yeah that bed heated up quick the bed's already at 60. okay so what's it doing oh it's heating up the other nozzle or it's, it's what are we doing what are we doing what are we doing i don't know what it's doing what are you doing oh oh we're extruding Way close to that. Go. So this thing's got a big chunky uh, tool head, so you probably won't be able to see much for a bit. But get a little too close. Yeah, whatever. I'll let it do. And there, are there any mods for a dual extruder for the V2? Nope. Oh, like a Bomb Tech BMG X2? What's a Bomb Tech BMG X2? Yeah, there. I don't know if there's there's nothing official. There there's nothing official for stuff like this at all. Um, there the the only thing that's like dual extrusion is Eddie's Idex, which is a Trident. Yeah, one hour? Yeah, one hour and we're up in printing. Um, the only thing is I haven't calibrated any XY offsets for the dual extruders. And this is a full-size Blink Fox, so this is going to take a while. Yeah, it's a chonky layer fan. It is a... Uh... Where is... Shoot. Oh. 4025? That's a 4020. Yeah, it's a 4020 fan. 
which apparently is too small for an afterburner, but it's fine here. How many spools of filament for trying to print one? Buy two, two of your main color, one spool of your accent color. Pre-sliced, yeah, this is the pre-sliced um, Blink Fox, and we're doing uh, Jesse uh, Deer Deep Purple, and whatever green that I have eight kilograms of that uh, Bamboo thought to send to me. So. But yeah, while that's uh, laying down, it's super boring first layer. Um, this is almost, I got wet sanding and to clean up a few nitpicky areas on this. And this should be ready for final paint. So that is getting there. The Mando suit is going to have a blaster suit. That, that's, that's what I was working on before coming in to the room today. That's why it's, the stream is a little delayed before uh, how I normally go live a little early. It's busy with that. Yeah, first layer is a little close to the bed, but I ain't going to mess with it. Slow. It's a first layer. I run my first layers on my borons at 30 millimeters a second. E-Sun ABS Plus. Heat deflection 73. Hello, E-Sun ABS parts that are two years old running in an enclosed V2. Have you had any issues in the past two years? No? Okay. You're good. Oh, we're printing green? When did it switch? I need to move the purge buckets up a bit. I didn't know it was going to change. Oh, there is a big XY offset. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't good. Okay, you can see the offset there. Yeah, there's a big XY offset. Yeah, apparently the new ABS is... The, the new eSun ABS Plus is not good. It used to be good, it's not. Um, as the SLA, it's fine. Remember, it's only the front shroud. Oh yeah, we're, we're way off. We're way off. Okay, cancel. Just. Oh, okay. Nozzle temp, heat bed temp, Z axis compensation. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Pause. Yeah, so here, I'll show you what's going on. I moved the bucket up too high. There we go. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so I killed the print. If you look, um, we are off quite a bit on our XY offset. So let's see, how much are we off? Uh oh, by the way, going tomorrow to pick up my toolbox. What is the best hot end extruder in your opinion? Revo plus some sort of modern dual extruder, dual gear extruder. We are out. One point eight. So this one is so uh, 
1.8 millimeters. So shoot, is that uh Offsets, offset. Where's offset, offset? Because they, this extruder and this extruder are 1.8, so I need to bring them in 1.8. Get you a Hamera access. I know. Don't worry. I got a care package on the way. Set. Okay, so actually it'd be negative 1.8. Okay. Does it have a vernier scale on the SD card? No. I got my own. Um, I think my Z is okay. Yeah, I think the Y is okay. Save. XYZ cube mirror tongue mirror dual XYZ cube dual pepperoni calibration calibration let's let's try calibration so it's dual mode so it's a, a dual print okay Instructions on the SD card. Yeah, there's a video on the SD card. I don't want to. I try to avoid putting the SD cards in my computer as much as I can. Um, nothing against them. I just. I like to. Uh, a little cautious. So. I'm just going off the manual. Why is Revo better than Dragon High Flow? Uh, do you do high speed printing? If not, Revo will pretty much beat it in every way. You don't have to worry about ooze. You don't have to worry about nozzles coming loose. You don't have to worry about having to go in there and, you know, it's a better designed hot end, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. I think this is. Like, let's be honest, the way this thing's put together is better than any Ender I've built. Oh, the firmware. Oh, apparently I was supposed to update the firmware. Oh, well. Better hide. Uh, Revo's a better hot end design, I think, than the uh, old style. You can only go so far with the old style of hot end we've been using for, you know, anything based on a V6. You only go so far. So we are printing a print called Calibration. So I just want to make sure my XY offsets are good. Then we'll go back to the box. And then basically a CR10. No. What is one part on here that's same with CR10? Like the only thing in common is um, their aluminum extrusions in the same size. The rails. It's a B wheel. Also, thanks for making me get into KP3S and install dual MGN7 rails and swap for V6 copper ones, at least 4K XLs. Nice. I like the KP3S. I know a lot of people are asking me about the, the KP3S versus the Ender 2. I don't have an Ender 2, so I can't do a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, but in terms of, you know, what you get on the KP3S, it's basically by numbers better in every regard than the Ender 2. It doesn't got V wheels. It actually has, you know, rails. 
direct feed. I think, is it Shep did a video? Chuck did a video comparing them? CR10 V3. Okay, let me see what a CR10 V3 is. CR10 V3. I'll be honest, I don't really follow Creality printers all that much. Even then, not really. Like, okay, it's it's direct feed, but it's a different direct feed setup. It's I don't know what kind of hot end it has in here. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's a three D printer. There's only so many ways you can put the Lego together. This first layer is slow. Yeah, they got the bracing. The bracing is nice. It's got the same runout sensor. It's got the same runout sensor. I don't know. It, it's a V wheel bed flinger from you know Asia Market. They're all the same. The difference is the packaging and the support and what you get for your money. That's basically the big things. It's not that I don't like Ender's. They're they're all the same. Like, if they wanted to send me this and it wasn't an IDEX, I would have turned it down. Just, I, don't, I haven't played a lot with IDEXs, so I want to play with IDEXs more. So, they offered to send me this. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, you can get bracing really easily. Basically, you only really need bracing if you're pr running the bed fast enough that you're actually causing the printer to sway. So, either have your printer on a really, you know, a, a table or something that doesn't move. Or don't print that fast and you don't need the bracing. Check the board for the soul boys. Have Creality use Creality boards. Have used Creality boards. Well, this one's using, I don't, I can't remember what board this is. What board does this have? It's got a picture in here. I don't know. I don't know what board this is. We're going to take a look what brand it was. By the way, 3D printing companies, I'm talking to you. If you want to send me a printer, and I think it's kind of cool, I'll say yes, okay? But when you send said printer, and it is of this size, you know, it's, it's, it's a big boy. It's, it's not a tiny little itty bitty box, but it's, it's a decent sized box that weighs around 10 kilograms or more. And the printer itself is worth several hundred dollars. Do not put it as $50. Because Customs is going to flag it. Because Canadian Customs actually does their job at, sometimes. And when they flag it, and they want me to verify the value, I'm not going to drive 45 minutes across town to wait in line in two hours at the custom place, and then spend several hundred dollars in taxes and duties, because I'm going to have to basically pay retail for it, um, and then drive 45 minutes back. I'm not going to do that. So don't do that. Because your printer, I'm not going to go get it. Okay, so it wasn't 1.8. Um, it is, um, I went the wrong direction. So stop, yeah, stop printing. The Y offset's good. Actually, the Y offset's one layer or one, it's 0.1. Stop, yes. Okay, so settings. All right, so there should be Yeah. Settings. So I went the wrong way. So it's 1.8. Okay. And then the Z or on the Y, it should be 0.4 millimeters, I believe. So 
but that's it's one thing save okay. I don't know why it prints this whole shebang don't need all this I just need the outline I just need you to print like four lines to calibrate this Is my where is my spatula? Spatula. Where are you? Print calibration. Print. Yes. There we go. Try this again. Printers was my favorite. Oh, my morons. Although I have, I've been using the V400 a lot. Um, I've done quite a bit of parts for the um, commando suit because I can do tall parts on it really easily. So I had to reprint my shin guards because they were uh, too, too big. Um, so these were printed on the V400 in ABS, no cracking. Uh, no issues at all, uh, and they print it beautifully. And this is um, this is Replitech MG94 based ABS, um, which this stuff sands so well that I barely need to bond to it. Like you just hit it with the orbital really quick, and it just goes flat. ABS sands so smooth compared to PLA. But yeah, no, I've been using the V400 a lot um, over the past week or whenever we unboxed it. It's actually a really solid uh, machine. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, yeah. I got to figure out because I'm, I'm gone the first week of uh, August there. So I need to do some video. So I think I'm going to do a video where I talk about the bamboo, the S, the, the V400 and the Prusa Mark III. I've been, those are like my three recent new printers are the Prusa and they're all completely different things, but they're all in the same price point. So I think it'd be interesting to uh, do a comparison between them all. I'd like to hear about the V400. Well, I've done two streams with it so far. How well does ABS take paint? Pretty good. This is just a uh, cheap generic primer that I bought a case of it from Granger. Still a few areas I got to clean up before I uh, go to paint. Basically, this was, I, I put it all together. We did it on stream on, what, Friday or whatever. Um, and then I bonded all the joints and then I did gave it a quick sand. And then basically I did one full can of primer or coat of primer on the outside. So you can see like it's not perfectly primed. This isn't ready for paint, but this is like the step before getting it ready for paint. So now I can see all the areas that need like a final once over before we uh, we paint it up. Almost there. Almost there. This is actually going to be the most, this is the most annoying part of the entire build. Because everything else is big flat pieces. This is the only thing with like details and whatnot that I actually got to dive into and like clean corners and whatnot. So every other part of the build is just flat pieces. Did I say deltas are just for show? Well, yeah, but it also does work. This is the first delta in a while I've been impressed with, put it that way. Why always MZV? Okay, because input shaper is a double-edged sword and it is not a silver bullet. The more aggressive input shaper you run, the more rounded your corners are. It's like acceleration. The more acceleration you give your printer, you, you know, you increase your acceleration value, the faster you can print, but then you get ringing. That's the downside to increasing your acceleration. You get ringing. Input shaper, the more aggressive an input shaper you give it, the faster you can print, but you get rounded corners. 
There is no perfect solution. People who complain about Input Shaper because it rounds corners are not using Input Shaper correctly. It's the same as trying to run 20k XL on an Ender, okay? You're, you're, you're pushing it more than the machine can give. So you're basically doing it wrong and you're not understanding the mechanics of how Input Shaper works. Oop, the headphones are dying. Oh well. Um, so you run MZV because it's not an aggressive input shaper. It's either the least aggressive or like the second least aggressive input shaper. Um, so essentially you just run it just enough that you can crank the Excel just a little bit, but not actually cause issues with your prints. Now, if you're printing stuff like the, the Mandalorian armor, or just all big bulky rounded corners, who cares anyways? Yeah, you can increase your input shaper value then and you'll get more rounded corners, but it's cosmetic, it don't matter. But if you're trying to print, you know, war on parts or other parts where you need crisp, sharp edges, you might not, you may need to drop it down a bit. Uh, let it finish that print. That is a calibration vernier. You do not need to use calipers to calibrate. Oh, okay. Well, let this print finish then. And uh, thank you for the five drill. I gotta figure out what I'm doing for dinner tonight. Just being the little guy. I'm gonna let this print finish and then we'll get the fox going. This is a problem. The printer went together so quick, we got time to kill. So if you haven't entered for the draw to win some filament, do that below. Link in the description. Do this now. And like the smash button. Because uh, the math is not adding up between the viewers and the likes. Although we are currently at around 420 viewers. So uh, that is. Uh, that's cool, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what else you would say. Have you seen Tom's video on the Revo? Um, a while ago, I think. I know he wasn't so happy that it was, uh, there's a little bit of it that's locked off and not completely open source, but I'm a little, I'm more okay with not being 100% open source. are you doing other hot end david gifted five community memberships cheers Ooh. i think we're good we're pretty dang close Okay. That is doing that. This is the problem. There's it's doing a calibration print. Uh, Philip, I do not speak, uh, whatever that is. German? I don't know. Is there anything in the book? Nope. Doesn't say anything in here about calibrating XY offset. We've got leveling. We've got loading filament. Starting the print. There's nothing in here about XY offsets. Apparently there's a video on the SD card, but we're not putting the SD card in my computer because uh, OPSEC. I, I try to avoid putting those SD cards in thumb drives in my computer. Does it scan the print? No, this does not have that ability. Get a cheap Chromebook for those SD cards. I have a laptop that I'm tempted to put like um, Linux on it or something for it. I've got an old uh, first gen i5 uh, notebook, notepad, whatever. Think book. Sacrificial computer. I will put it next to my other. Oh, wait, I got no room for it. <laughs>
Uh, might have missed it, but how did the dissolvable filament? It's not dissolvable. Um, I left it overnight running in the, uh, soaking in the water and in the ultrasonic for a bit. It is not dissolvable filament. Uh, it breaks away really clean, but unfortunately the gears got destroyed trying to get it out. Um, but it is breakaway filament. It's not dissolvable, unfortunately. I have dissolvable filament. I got to run it through the dryer. We'll try again. So what is it saying? Uh, look at that print up, look up calibration print on printables. Calibration print IDEX. Okay, it's kind of like that, but. Oh, that's not that. I do not see it. There's a new Chrome OS Flex. Can you turn an old laptop into a Chromebook? Huh. Four percent. Oh. Oh, now the fan turns on. Okay. So how does this work? How does this work? camera cool um it printed now what <laughs> uh sv04 calibration sv04 calibration that is it okay here we go too bad my headphones died so okay the adjustment okay We print the model, okay. Okay, so oop. so the uh, the offset along the y axis indicates the y axis offset. The offset of the x is the x. Okay, that makes sense. Size of nozzle one print green. Okay, and then we got the center, okay. Calculating and adjusting the offset. From the center of the teeth, the the line means the X has no offset and needs to be adjusted. Okay, so let's take a look. So, that is ever so slightly out, and that is bang on. Okay, so my Y is good. My X is one. So one is okay, so the positive. less than two millimeters okay so that's less than two millimeters then the first measure you only need to find the aligned teeth count how many teeth away nope nope three okay so Oh, 
Oh my god, look at this. what's this math? Okay, here we go. So in my case, I gotta do the opposite of this. Okay. So I need to move it to the left. So I gotta move it to the left. Oh my god, this is Hope you brushed up on algebra. You don't like this. You don't like this. So this one's pretty close. Like we're only out one line to the left. So if it's this one's bang on. This one is straight up. So on my Y axis, I'm bang on. So on my X axis, um, okay, fish print settings, set awesome. Where are you going? Where are you going? So on my X, the final distance, the first move of changing. Nobody said there would be math. I'm not liking this. Nozzle two is to the right. Well, nozzle two is to the left in my case. Okay, so calculator. Maybe just to the left according to the values positive. This is a pain in the butt. I don't know. Settings, set hot and offset. So I bring it over more, so that brought it over. I was way out, so boom, save, close enough. Cool. Let's do a print. We're just gonna let it print. Fox, print, yes, Let's go. Good enough. Eyeballed it. Bleh. I did. I literally, it's like, a, like 0.1 mil. It, it was pretty dang close. The, the Y offset is perfect. So, do one more test print. Yeah, we'll we'll do it. Do it live. YOLO. Well, it's if it's not calibrated, essentially you need to have, because it, it print with one nozzle and then you go, that nozzle goes away and then another nozzle comes out and prints. So if your nozzles are not set up so that they, the printer thinks they're in the exact same position, what will happen is, is if they're offset, like when the machine's built or whatever, if this nozzle's here, when they go to print something that's supposed to overlap, they, they, they won't inter, they won't interact properly. Have I tried the CHT nozzles? Yeah, they work fine. Good enough for government work. Pretty much. Yo ho lo o. Oh, as a, uh, a fine poet once said.
pa pra, pa pa pra. Okay. Maybe try quantum filament. Ooh, that'd be cool. Quantum filament, two different types of quantum filaments. You got an only Benchies account? There's only Benchies merch. Link in the description. Oh, hey, right there. Or check out the uh, link in chat. You can adjust the XY offset on the fly. Can I? I cannot. I can adjust Z axis compensation. Print speed, nozzle temps. I can't adjust XY compensation on the fly. Although I'm running the stock firmware, which apparently I got to upgrade, but I forgot to do that. So let me uh, download that SV4 firmware. So SV04, latest firmware from 24 January. Fix an error where the extrudes may hit each other when you finish near printing mode. That would be bad. Okay. But yeah, we'll, we'll update the firmware after. No, this printer is not a printer that goes bar. This is a printer that just kind of does its thing and doesn't complain. We'll see. Yes, I will try PETG and PLA. Can't remember which one I'm supposed to use for support. The printer goes back. ETG support for PLA. Okay, I'll give it a try. Well, they don't stick to each other, so they should be fine. The problem is you want dissolvable supports because if otherwise you're just printing, you know, you, you can use it at breakaway or you could just have properly dialed in settings and the supports break away. Like all, all the, all, you know, all the heavy Mando stuff that I'm printing is all ABS with ABS supports and I just have my support settings right and it breaks away just fine. Um, I guess you get a little smoother finish if you can go right to the edge, I guess, if it, they don't attach that good, but. Printer goes, you got time, don't you? Yep. It doesn't give me an estimation. This is the Blink Fox. This will probably take all night for this printer, but. Does IDEX have something advantages like Camara? Yeah. Okay, so the problem with the Camara, um, like why would you build a printer with Camara nowadays? I don't think you can buy them anymore. Um, but the Chimera has, it's basically a single hot end with two nozzles. The problem is, is having it so that both nozzles are exactly perfectly the same Z offset, having your bed be perfectly flat, having your gantry be perfectly trimmed to the bed. Because if any of that is out, you're gonna get nozzle strike. So that nozzle that's not printing will, hit shit and drag on parts and whatnot and two it will just ooze continuously because you turn the power off or you turn you can't turn the heat off to it so you can retract the filament but it's still going to ooze um so the chimera is an outdated design like you it, it, yeah and then the cyclops is even is another problem because on the cyclops your filament path does a straight 90 which uh so does the positron and filament doesn't like to flow around corners you really don't want to do that. Okay, so I got to move it another 0.1 degrees. We're, we're pretty good. Yeah, actually, we might be okay. Okay. 
or it might be belt tension screwing me up here. Whatever. A friend of mine tried to use a bubble level to level the bed. Well, that's because 3D printing, the terms we use in 3D printing are just wrong half the time. We call it leveling the bed when you're tramming the bed. Like we call them Cartesian printers when technically everything but a delta and a polar is a Cartesian. They, a Cartesian is a, a plane, a reference plane of motion or movement or zero, zero, you know, zero, 100, 100, zero. That's Cartesian. It's just a, a plotting method. It's not a motion system. This is a, you know, bed moving in Y axis, tool head moving in X axis, vertical Z system or whatever. It's not Cartesian. I can live with that offset. It's not perfect. Was it Chimera? No, Chimera is from uh, the original V1.0. Like there, there was a Voron that came with a Chimera, uh, but it was the V1.0. Um, let me find it. Cause it was even depreciated in V1.5. Uh, yeah. So the original Voron V1.0, um, had a Chimera in it. There it is right there. Actually, no, the Chimera had two separate blocks. That's right. One heat sink, two blocks. Yeah. So there's your Chimera. There's a V1.0. So that had a Chimera. I'm pretty sure the V1.5 did not. I don't even know if V1.5 had a manual. Yeah, because V1.5 was just a, a midlife upgrade to the V1. Yeah, I don't think there was a manual for the V1.5. Because it was just change in part design. Yeah. Something better than besides IDEX? Mm, IDEX. Like, if you want two tool heads, IDEX or tool changer. Like, there are systems like Ultimaker where you have, like, printer cartridges where, like, the hot end's a cartridge and it, like, raises and lowers on a pivot or whatever. So there are systems like that. But you, you basically want, you don't want both nozzles moving at the same time across the print surface um, if you can help it. So either you need to raise one out of the way or park it off the bed. Just a little bit. Tool changing. Yeah, where you, you, you swap tool heads. Uh, E3D has one. Um, the Prusa XL is one that's in development. What other goodies we got? Let me get rid of the acupuncture needle before I stab myself. That. Uh, we got some spare nozzles. Um, PTFE. Why do I have PTFE? Where is the PTFE supposed to go? Why did you give me PTFE? Is this an all metal hot end or is this not an all metal hot end? Why do I have PTFE? Are the nozzles V6? No, they're not V6. They're the um, Creality style. It's that, that the bigger one. You think PVA will work with Urkfa? You'd have to purge a lot. Maybe I'm supposed to have a short reverse phone? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's supposed to be like up here. I don't know. Doesn't say anything in the manual. No, you can't put you can't put the PTFE in there. Um, I can't see on top. Do I still have the step ladder? I do not in this room. To feed the extruder, you can't. It doesn't fit in the uh, the extruder. Doesn't have a big enough hole for uh, PTFE. Oh, 
And there's nothing in the pictures. Cool. I don't know. It's printing. The setup was pretty good. First layer is not the greatest, but it is what it is. Step ladder is stuck. <laughs> Help me, step ladder. Okay, we got the stuff. So, again, we got the stuff for tomorrow. So, tomorrow we're doing the 3D chameleon. I got the parts printed for that. So, we're going to be putting the 3D chameleon on the uh, the Prusa. The Nada Prusa Mini is getting the chameleon treatment tomorrow. PTFE is the guide. The guide for what? I'm assuming it would have to go up here. The only place I can put PTF in, PTFE in, I think. Mm. Nope, not even up top there. Unless it's the guide between the um, the extruder and the hot end, but I don't know if it's an all metal hot end. And I can't remember if the Titan, even with an all metal heat, no, yeah, you would still need a bit of PTFE in there. So yeah. Did the not approve so many? Oh, it printed until it jammed. We got half of one print off of it, and now the extruder doesn't want to work, so it's getting ripped out, and I'm putting a chameleon on it. Which, the whole point of the not approve it was to mod it anyway, so. Uh, let me take a look. Let me see if they... What do they say for temperature? Uh, uh, metal Titan Direct Drive. Independent dual extruder, auto level, 32 bit, large volumes, dual Z axis, flex plate, SD card, resume printing. See, it says ASA and ABS. So here's the controller STM32. I don't think this is a Creality, but it looks like the color scheme of Creality. Oh, no, it is a Creality board. Set axis, flex plate, large SD card, jump tensioner, 500 watt power supply. Big chunk is the power supply. Okay, uh, power, did it say? Bed temp, max bed temp. Operational extruder 260. Yep, yeah, it's probably not an all metal. I'll double check it um, if I remember to, if I do go to do a review. Thoughts on the Beagle board? Um, not worth it, I believe. It's the board I'm thinking of. Um, just the clipper board. We're probably, because the, the Beagle board is like, is it running its own thing or is it running clipper? I can't remember, because that thing was like in development hell forever. I remember that being like the new thing like four years ago. And I've never really seen a lot about it. It's not a mean well power supply. Um, it's a RP524 generic white label power supply, which makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't a mean well inside. That's for sure. Here's the Fox we're printing, by the way. If you're curious. Can I try? I'll, I'll try quantum filament. This is going to take a while. The Meanwhile, part number, but that's just also a form factor. Like the the LRS 200 is a is you can get non Meanwell LRS 200s. It's like kind of a form factor when it comes to power supplies. The heat brick is some weird shape. It's like eight millimeters wide and six millimeter short and also 22 millimeter long. Okay, so it's like some weird. Yeah, because it, it's probably because it's a Titan, right? So it would be. Would it be like a Chimera heat break going to a Mark 8 block? I don't know. I got to take one of these apart, but I'm not going to do it now, obviously. The simple core. What is a simple core? Yeah, why corks why oh that thing okay cool uh what do you think about the new manta boards which one is it manta m8p that was that what it's called it's, it's bq big tree tech okay so they got this board which is an eight stepper board and you put a cm4 on there or their own equivalent of a CM4 because you can't get CM4s and they got a four step one. Um, I have one from Fizek that does pretty much the same thing. Um, so it's 
a four stepper board that you can put a Pi CM4 on it, or you can use their own whatever, not a Pi controller because you can't get Pies. So at the end of the day, it's a 32 bit controller with TMC drivers attached to a Raspberry Pi or analog. The only difference is it's the same form factor. So if you need that form factor, go for it. But in the way it will work, will be like every other 32-bit board with TMC drivers attached to a Raspberry Pi running clipper. The only difference is the form factor. So what are my thoughts on it? Eh, if you need the form factor, go for it. But it's Big Tree Tech, which means in six months, they probably won't make it anymore and they'll have a different model because everything's out of stock and they only do one run of all this stuff lately. And it's a pain in the butt because nothing stays the same. What speeds does this default to? I don't know. Let's pull up here and see what the uh, profile for this says. I'm not liking this. This one is fine. This one... Why are you... I don't like this. Mm, okay, go to this one. Oh, uh, just like that. Okay, so let's see. Oh, oh cancel. Add a printer. On network. So wall. SV04. They don't have the SV04 in Prusa Slicer. All right, Kira. Never mind. Download their Cura version. Download anyways. Why does everyone have to use their own skin version of Cura? Just all use the same stuff, guys. Come on. In that cable, and the stretchy string across the bar at the top. It doesn't need to be hung from the top. It just needs like this one's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm installing their cure right now to find out what the uh, the default speeds and feeds of this thing are. Painfully slow to watch. I think we're on layer two. It, it's a bed flinger. It's probably got some pretty uh, some pretty uh, conservative stock values. Is the forum fought good? I don't know. Depends on the guy throwing the parts in the box that day of the week. I've heard good things about it. I've heard bad things. In terms of bomb in a box, it's probably the most commonly bought one. So they're probably the best bomb in a box, but comparing it to like an LDO kit, it doesn't compare. Every now and then somebody gets a bad board, somebody gets a bad controller, somebody gets a bad SSR, bad wiring, or bad heater or something. It, it's literally somebody walking down an aisle in Shenzhen throwing all the parts in a box for you. That's what you're buying. Although I think they now come with a wiring harness, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so we got the... Dual mode. So you have to... You can't just have all of them. You have to have each one individual. Okay, well, dual mode next. Okay. Custom. 
So, speeds, here's your 60. Infill outer wall, inner wall, blah, blah. Turn all these on, holy shit. Speeds, actually, speeds. Speed, travel speed, Z hop speed. Oh my god, what the heck? Okay, close. Okay, there are your default values for this machine. Slow. There you go. It do be how it is, though. It do be how it is, though. Try printing at 200. Well, here. Just print speed 200%. So, we're still going to be firmware limited by acceleration, probably, and max speeds. But I just doubled up the speed. I, I wanted to wait till the first layer was done. 15 on the outers. Yeah, that's... That's, uh... That's conservative. <laughs> A lot of these machines come with very, very conservative stock value. They just do. I do like the anodizing. It, it reminds me of my uh, Game Boy Pocket, the, the cool ice one that I had as a kid. That... Flipper conversion and input shaping? Probably not. This machine's probably gonna stay stock. I'll play around with it for a bit. Maybe do, I don't know if this, I'll end up doing a review on it. Cause there's only so much you could say about these machines. Does it work or does it not? And what's wrong with it? That's, have you noticed every review of this style of V-wheel bed flinger since like four years ago is, hey, it prints okay. Here are some issues it has. Seriously, go watch any video from Tom, 3D Printing Nerd, uh, Maker's Muse. Um, pretty much every review of these types of printers are, it prints okay, here are the list of issues. It, it's like when you're, you're you're watching American TV and you got the, the pharmaceutical ad. Hey, this will help you from sleep, you know, this will help you sleep through the night. Here's all the ways it's going to kill you. Um, th it works, but here are the downsides to this machine. It is what it is. 3D printing is not a perfect science. When you build lower cost machines you got to cut corners somewhere what are you willing to accept i don't recommend using pre-slice file on the s has some bad extrusion flow on it on two svo force um well this is just the one that was there and we're just going to roll with it for now if it works it works if it don't it don't like quality from FDM machines. Um, you won't because it's completely different technologies. This is a glorified hot glue gun splooging out molten plastic on a CNC built with cheap parts from China. That is using a DLP, whatever, high quality, high resolution screen with photosensitive resins. They are not the same. More on kits are expensive, having a tough time clicking order. Yeah, well, price it out and then look at the exchange rate. It, they're not that bad. Um, what's a Sparta 3D kit at? I don't want to go to the Facebook page. I want the store. Products. Printers. Okay, so a Voron LDO... 2.4 R2 kit from Sparta 3D. Um, it includes a Revo um, and it includes a Raspberry Pi. So that's a th 2,000 Canadian printed solid. So let's take a look at the uh, Prusa's largest Voron seller. Um, or Voron's largest uh, kit seller is Prusa. So Voron hardware were hits so so it's a 300 in black it's sold out so it's 13 500 so 
USD to CDN. So 13,500 is roughly 1860 US plus adding a Revo to it. It's like another hundred bucks. So you're like 1900 and then you got whatever Canadian customs fees on top of that. So it's actually about the same. It, it's pretty close, I would say. Like, I wouldn't call it, you know, right there, but it, it could be a lot worse than. Talk to Paul with print shift at Murph. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Canadian customs fees sec. Oh, I know. Oh, believe me, I know. Um, which one was it? It was the FL Sun Super Racer. That was the printer that I refuse now to go deal with customs anymore because that machine showed up at customs. The uh, not the V400. The V400 showed up fine, but I got a call from FedEx and like, hey, you got to go clear your package at customs. I'm like, you guys do that. Go do your job and rate me with FedEx fees after. And they're like, no, you got to go do it. So I go down there, drive 45 minutes to town to go to the customs place, wait like an hour for it's my turn, and then go up and like, hey, um, there's a package coming to me. I, I, I want it. Can I have it? And they're like, what is it? I'm like, it's a 3D printer. I run a YouTube channel. It's for review. I didn't purchase it. It's being sent to me for review. And they're like, cool. Um, is it $50? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't look at it. And they're like, well, we need to know the value of it. And I'm like, uh, I pulled it up on my phone on Amazon. It's like here. They're like, cool. That's $500. You was 13% of that in taxes and then some random duty fee. So I ended up paying like over a hundred bucks. Plus FedEx wanted their money afterwards. So like probably $200 altogether and lost three hours of my life. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, there's links in the description. Consider becoming a channel member. Um, but after that, I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Screw that. You got surprised by hundred dues for a $200. Yep. And the worst is FedEx because FedEx will just drop something on your door and then like a month later, you'll get a bill from them for like 130 bucks. The uh, the Prusa, the Prusa Mark III um, that was sent to me by Printed Solid um, free for, hey, you're just going to build it. And I did. Um, he sent me that one because it was a damaged box. He couldn't sell it, right? So the printer was fine. It was just a damaged box. So he sent me it. And then FedEx, like a month and a half later, sent me a bill for $130. And I'm like, thank you, FedEx. You're awesome. Can Polylight -like Galaxy PLA, the dark loop? Sure. I'm down for that. I need I need to get more cool PLAs. I've got a ton of cool ABSs, and I, I recently restocked my. Well, I'm actually running low again on black ABS. <laughs> Do they make it cheaper? No, because for them it doesn't matter the purpose. It's an object coming into Canada. Apparently, um, uh, was it Colin mentioned something on Twitter about having it declared like sample, not for resale, might help. I've never. I'm still, you know, figuring all that out. But apparently saying sample, not resale, you can skirt that. But they don't care that I got it for free. It's a, it's like, you know, winning the lottery. In the US, when you win the lottery, you gotta pay taxes on it. You know, you didn't pay, you, you just got free money. This is, it doesn't matter. It's, it's an object coming into Canada. You gotta pay your duties on it. Uh, which I don't mind like if it's like a you know if they send me a, a multi hundred dollar printer it's like a fifty dollar fee yeah whatever but Yeah, I still need to, like, this is my first year doing, you know, YouTube as a job. So I'm, I'm still figuring out all the business stuff. So. Forty percent plus. Well, uh, Mehmet, that is just taxes. So uh, the, we have in Canada, we have HSC, Harmonized Sales Tax. I think it's 11 or 13 percent. I can't remember which one it is. 
I think it used to be 13 and went down to 11, or it used to be 15 and went down to 13. I can't remember. But that's just taxes. And then there's duties, whatever they, whatever duties are, um, whatever random item it is, because that depends on the item. Uh, we are on layer three. I don't know. Three or four. I don't know. It, it's printing solid layers, so it's taking a little bit. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I have. So technically, I have to report the value of these printers as like in like as part of like, you know, this is revenue technically, you know, the printers are free. They're still like I have to report the value of them to the government if I do my taxes right, which I still need to figure out how to do that. <laughs> he said duty. Yeah, this is my first year doing YouTube full time, so I got to like sit down with the business person and get it all sorted out. Make sure I'm doing everything right. Because there is a lot. Go away. Go away. Why am I, why are you doing that? Uh, thanks for your videos. I now print one piece hat for my V01 with hinges. Nice. Uh, my sister won some stuff on the island. Yeah, um, Oprah was famous for that. Like, people won cars and then they got, you had to pay the taxes on a whole car right then and there if you want your car. But yeah, in the States, if you win something, you have to pay tax. In Canada, it's not that. So if I, like, win the lottery in Canada, um, I just get the money. There, there's no taxes on winnings in Canada, I believe. Accountant. Oh, I know. Using a carbon tube on the X can push. Have you seen the printers use it? That uses the carbon tube on the X. Bill up. Gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Here's the thing. You can push crazy excels with normal hardware. It's just what are the downsides to it? Like you can push 30, 50 K Excel as long as you got motors for it and drivers for it and you got everything tuned, right? The carbon tube allows you cuts a little weight, but you can also just go boat and save the same weight. Just don't do like the crazy hollowed out milled aluminum square tube stuff. We've uh, somebody on the team did an FEA for it and the whole thing is spaghetti. <laughs> Depends on the lottery. I know if I win like, you know, the, the lottery lottery, um, you just get the money. 50k here depends how you build it like that's the thing like fill up what did i already say fill up with the 550 community anyways cheers i can't remember if i just said that it depends how you build a machine look at cnc machines look at pick and place machines there are plenty of machines that make high speed 3d printers look like a joke in terms of how fast and how accurately they move the thing is 3d printers are cheap we build them with cheap hardware so we're limited. The moment you start grabbing stuff from like CNC and pick and place machine movement and you know, that's that tier of equipment, it, it makes these look like, you know, they're built out of Lincoln logs and, and Meccano. Just do what billionaires do and don't pay taxes. That's because they don't make money. They have assets. You can't task somebody on um, like, they're not making money. They have assets that are worth money, but you know, Bill Gates just doesn't, he can't Scrooge McDuck into a billion dollars. He doesn't have that. He has uh, stocks that if he were to cash them out, they would be worth value, but you don't get taxed on that as far as I'm aware. Same with like this LTT store water bottle is worth $20. If I were to sell it, I would have $20 but I'm not getting taxed on this. So if this was worth a million dollars, until I sell it, I, I just have a million dollars in assets. So that's why billionaires don't make money. They, they, they get paid nothing. The company pays for all their expenses or they use the value of stuff they own to take out loans that they use to buy stuff. And that's the problem with the system. It's not the problem with the billionaire. Everyone's like, oh, these billionaires, they, they don't, they can't Scrooge McDuck into money. They just own stuff that happens to be worth a lot that they can use as leverage for loans that they buy stuff with. 
so they can skirt the taxes. Blame your government for letting them get away with that shit. Don't blame the billionaires for doing the thing that they can do. Yeah, income tax. If you're not making money, you got no income. You happen to own a lot of stuff, but that's not income. But I am not a lawyer. I am not an accountant. Capital gains. Okay, I, I don't know taxes. I buy quick tax. I, I, I pay 30 bucks for the thing. I punch in numbers and the government goes, you owe me money. And I give the government money and then that's it. Which, by the way, if you do your taxes and you get back a lot of money every year, you're doing your taxes wrong. Because you just gave the government an interest-free loan for a year. You, When you do your taxes, you want to either get very little back or owe the government just a little bit. You want to net out to zero. You don't want to get thousands back when you do your taxes or hundreds. That just means you gave the government too much money that you could have invested and made more money on your own. How does one... Well, you have, like... Why have three kids and no money when you can have three money and no kids? It's all about, you know the shell game. So it's how you distribute your assets. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a money. Player. You're in, you're in the wrong stream. If you want to talk about fiscal responsibility, as I like just signed for a case of primer rattle cans for a hundred bucks from Granger. <laughs> I have cows. I don't know how much do cows cost. That's why you incorporate. Yeah, I have a business. This is a business. I can write off this room. I can write off a portion of my electricity bill, which um, when you have a lot of printers running and they're all enclosed printing ABS, actually makes quite a big impact on your home uh, electricity. <laughs> Cows are not kids, they're assets. There you go. But if, if I really like my hamburger, is that an asset? No, I want a hamburger. Do not ship cows via FedEx. Can you do it like a coconut? Like a coconut, you could put a label on and ship the coconut. Can you do that with a cow? Where you just stick a label on a cow and ship that? Goats count as a kid. <laughs> Electricity is 46 cents a kilowatt. I don't even want to know what mine is. Uh, can I see? Number one. Can I, can I see my bill? I have login. Yeah. 10 bones for your next business meal. Cheers. <laughs> Time to show the Mercury One kit from Fabrico. <laughs> I seen some of those at uh thing. They were pretty cool. At uh, Murph there. Turn, turn your fiscally irresponsible hobby into a job at MVS. I'm just keeping the fiscally irresponsible uh, train going. tax evasion there's always you know there's always money in the banana stand i sell benchies under the table on the black market uh can you please elaborate on aluminum square tube thing you just mentioned oh um let me find it on aliexpress here uh, AliExpress. and you gotta be careful because aliexpress likes to show random stuff that you really shouldn't show on stream express one and three uh, let me see here. One of these. Okay. So these have been popping up now and they're like hollowed out aluminum tubes for your gantry on a Voron. Okay. Um, so that's a B0. Is it this one? No, that's a carbon fiber one. These ones. Um, so these have been showing up now for a bit and they're, they're lighter than the aluminum. Okay. 
The problem is they bow quite a bit under an FEA. Now, real world, I don't know, but somebody on the team did an FEA comparing one of these to a generic 2020 piece of a extrusion, and it's double the flexiness, basically. So, what filament are we printing? Um, this is uh, the Bamboo Lab whatever neon green and Jesse Deep Purple. Because for some reason, Bamboo sent me eight spools of this shit. You gotta use it for something. This I see Fabrico has a salad fork kit. I have seen. Um, DFH wants to send me a kit though. So I think we're waiting on the DFH uh, salad fork. But uh, I've been talking with Fabrico about something else that we're kind of waiting on. What other kits is he? I know he carries Rat Rig now. Ooh, an Ender 5. Oh, oh here we go. Create bot super mini 3D printer, guys. Oh, look at it. It's so little. How do I close this? There we go. Oh. 20 to 40 millimeter a second speed. Oh, hell yeah. 80 by 80 by 90. Heck yeah. 50 watt power supply. That bed ain't getting hot. Uh, salad fork would be fun. Do they do uh, do a 160? Don't, if you're going to build a salad fork, um, do a 160, I would say. Don't do the, the 120. Because even like the Micron at 120 is, you don't get a lot of printer for the value. Put it that way. Annex, one day. Do they have? Like, I spoke with Mental and a whole bunch of the Annex team at Merck. Got along with them fine. So... But I don't think there's any Annex kits. So that's the problem. Like full kits, so. Did I see the Annex Tyco 8 motors? Yeah, that's a little overkill in my opinion. Like, NEMA 14s on a V0 can do a three minute bench. What do you need eight for? I'm not printing that fast. I don't speed print, I don't. Like I, you know, I want my prints to be reliable and look decent. So I don't speed print. <laughs> um, a one minute benchy. If, if you can find a, pl a filament that you can extrude and make a quality benchy in one minute and the plastic can, you know, melt and reform and not look like, you know, poop, we'll, we'll talk. Seems to be working pretty good. Stealth burner out soon? I don't know, whenever it's done. I'm not doing the manual for it, so I don't know. Fastest poop bench. You just park in the middle of the bed and purge. Well, there's a reason people doing the speed benchies were using MG94 ABS. It flows very, very good on high speed. So like, uh, where did I put you? Uh, where's my Replitech stuff? So yeah, so Replitech, uh, is that PLA? That's a recycled PLA. I have so much of this stuff. I don't know. Is it blue or white? Uh, what's that? That is PLA recycle. Is it white? White ABS. White MG94. I might have to use that for a build. We might be doing a white printer build at one point. Might do that with the salad fork. Make it kind of like the opposite of uh, Nora there. But yeah. So this is the Replitech stuff, and this is MG94 based ABS, which, if I'm not mistaken, MG94 ABS was uh, Stratasys was made for Stratasys. Like it's it's like that's what they got designed for their printers. So it's like a Gucci ABS. And it flows so good. 
Ever tried a three millimeter nozzle? Um, I've done the CHT 1.8. What's the name of the micron? Nora. Is there any advantages to switching steppers to the ones we have double the steps? Um, personally, I believe not. Um, you could always increase micro stepping, but I don't. I, I run at 16. You lose torque when you go to the 0.9s. Um, and I believe they're louder, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it the other way? I can't remember. But I I think I only have one machine with 0.9 steppers, and I couldn't tell you the difference. Like, it, I don't think it's worth going to 0.9. You you lose torque. And I, I, I run with stealth chop off, like, I, on all my machines. I, I want torque. I'd rather have my printers be more reliable and move a little quicker. The Replitech could work. It, it, you know what? They're they're a local company in town. Like I legit just was out in the area, and I'm like, you know what? I need some filament, and I just stopped in their shop and grabbed some. So, yeah, I got some of their recycled PLA actually too. Mike is bad again. What do you mean, Mike is bad? Oh, oh. There we go. Have I seen the Caesar salad fork? It's a Caesar salad fork. Uh, Caesar salad fork printer. What is a Caesar salad fork? I, th I'm just getting chicken recipes. <laughs> Static noise when I talk. Um, the battery was dying. I plugged it back in. I forgot to charge it before stream, so. I'm running a pretty heavy gate noise gate on it too so which oh here let me turn that off see you're wondering about the noise of this printer um this is the only printer i got running at the moment so yeah the green it's under extruding it's under extruding the green Purple seems to be okay. I'll try tightening the knob after. Yeah, the fan is pretty annoying. Turn the noise suppression back on. I'll use the, the less aggressive noise suppression. Oh yeah, the... the, the yeah, the fans are annoying. It, the, it's got a PSU fan that's quite annoying. Plus, bl both blowers are going. Um, and both hard on. So there's five fans going right now. Actually, six. So there's a fan in the controller and there's a fan or there's a fan on the controller and a fan in the power supply. So there are six fans on this printer going right now. No, this is all PLA. This is all PLA. Can't hear anything over my 8-bit 300 millimeter printer on my desk. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a two. This is just a two-color test model that came with the printer, and it is really under extruding that uh, green. Can I adjust flow. Bump the temps up a bit. Kind of encourage flow a bit. Turn that knob down. See if that works. Thoughts on PHA? Um, I think I have some. Do I have PHA? I can't remember. Was I sent some PHA? Let me check. Uh, let me see here. Nope. Nope. Uh, is it this bag? Nope. I've got a whole bunch of samples somewhere. Is this stuff in it? Yeah, I think it's this box. Yeah. Is the music gone? Oh, here, let me turn the music back on. Here we go. My headphones died, so I don't hear the music. Uh, I like PLA Pro. 
Pulley at PLA Pro. Poly Mid PA12 CF. Transparent Red. I got PVB. What's PV? I got. I got. I don't know what PHA is. I got PVB. I can't remember what PVB is. It's Prusament. And then some Prusament PLA and more PLA. PVB. What is PVB? I can't remember what PVB is. Yeah, I'm not doing the PLA PETG thing right now. PVB is probably the same as Polysmooth. Okay. Okay, so it's PV. Okay, so it dissolves like ASA. Okay. Okay, so it's just smooth old PLA. Cool. Uh. What did you miss? Printer printing. It doing its thing. Under extruding a bit, but it is what it is. We are 2% in. So this print is going to take all night. So hope I didn't plan on doing anything on this desk tonight. I know. I'll use my other desk. I built another desk in this room a while ago, so I would have more room to work on things. Oh, wait. I got a freaking printer living on it already. Yeah. I know. I'll use the area in the garage. Oh, wait. No, that's filled with Mandalorian armor right now and paint. I need more room. <laughs> when does the stream end? When I say it ends. Which will be around 5 o'clock, because I gotta go pick up the little guy at daycare. Doing metal cast? I don't have the... I can't melt metal. I don't have the way to do that. I would love to play around with that, like have a kiln. Um, who was the, the guy at uh, Sapphire 3D? Is that who I talked to? I really wish I had talked to this guy at Murph. I talked to him, but I didn't do a video on it. And I, looking back, I, I really wish I had. Uh, but this guy, he was at Murph. If you went to Murph... Um, and what he sells, or what his company does, I guess, um, they sell metal, or it's filament, but it's got metal in it. Um, and then you run it through a kiln. So you can print stuff on a normal printer with a hardened nozzle, and then you run it through a kiln. And it, it, it makes this. So, I, I really wish I had talked to this guy more and did a video on it. Um, but yeah. So you, you, you print it, it's not cheap, it's like $150 a spool. Um, but then you just put it in a kiln and you got stuff. I'm building a death racer. I will be building a death racer. Um, I know right now they're playing around with some of the design with it for motors. Like they, I think they're going to, they're like working on a brushless motor. So I want to build one with brushless motors. I don't want to use the, 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 the current ones. I want to do brushless. Um, but that will be something that we will be building on the channel. I don't think we'll be doing it for Earth. It'll be for Murph next year. Um, but I think that might be a late summer, fall project on the channel, I believe. I need to rent or buy an office. So the problem is, uh, Nuno, um, I've been looking. I've been looking to see if I can rent something. Um, I don't need a lot of space because I'll still do stuff here. It's just I want a second location to store everything and work out of basically and stream sometimes, but still have like this room for tinkering. Um, the problem I have is I don't live in a big city. Um, I live in Southern Ontario. There's really only one city down there. Um, so you can figure that out. So it's not like LA or any of these big cities, right? I live in Canada. The, the, the cities don't get that big. So... I don't have like a huge amount of options to choose from, from where I can look. Um, and then also I live in the burbs outside the city. So there's the city, there's a town next to the city, and then there's like suburbia and I live in suburbia. So there is like 
no commercial complexes near me or industrial center. Well, there is one, but it's not that big. So it's not like there's locations around. I found places um, that would be in the upper end of what I would consider in budget, but I'm not driving 45 minutes to go to work when I work for YouTube. I, no, I need to find somewhere close because then it's like, okay, I can hop over to the shop, work on something, come home. I, I, I yeah. So it's kind of not, it, I'm working on it, but it is nothing is really easily available, unfortunately. So focus on the printer. There we go. Rent an apartment. There's not, a, there's no even apartment buildings near me. Are you interested in any interesting events you're going to in Europe? Um, none according to my pocketbook. I know there's like the, there's one coming up. There's like a trade show coming up. I would love to go to like Rapid, uh, whatever, or TCT Birmingham or whatever it's called, or Maker Faire in Prague. I would love to do that, but that's expensive. I'm not that big of a YouTuber. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, need to collab with Carlin Furs. I, I, my, the ground conditions in my location are not favorable to the kind of stuff like that. It's brush, not brushless. I thought it was brushless. I just watched the video. It's a BLDC motor. CCT 360. Ever been to Norway? I've never been to Europe. I have been to Canada. I have been to the United States. Um, that from my location to Murph and my location to Disney World and then also a little bit for work down in the, the Alabama area. Um, but I flew in there. Um, and I've been to Aruba. Outside of that, no, I have not been there. Pre-built shed. I've looked into it, but it's not really a lot of room and then I gotta run power, heating and cooling to it. And it's not worth it for how big my backyard is. And again, I live in the burbs. So it's not like I can just build a giant shed back there. I need to travel more. I would love to travel more. Ruba is that? Well, I know. I haven't been to Europe. Con an archaeological dig in your backyard, then use the dig to convince your wife to let you build a printing book. You should come to Germany. We have a nice 3D printing. Um. So, um, let's see here. Okay, let's see. So, let's see. So, if I wanted to fly from Detroit to Frankfurt, um, that is, the cheapest flight is $1,300. Um, the stream, while it is doing pretty good, I don't think the stream is doing that good. In case you haven't noticed, I don't really have sponsors on this channel. So, um, maybe if, you know, Raid Shadow Legends were to kind of hop in, maybe we could figure something out, but not at this time. Sell Voron. I'm Sponsor time. I'm all for sponsorships, but you don't go looking for them. They come to you, and so far none have come. Well, actually, no. One came to me, but they weren't the people that they were representing. They were like a middleman who were like, hey, we'll offer you this much to do a sponsor for this company and i looked into it and i'm like wait a minute you are not that company you're a middleman so you're gonna take a big cut of it because you're offering me this much and then no 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 so you know what when did ltt sponsor at i would unsub if i go with raid so justin if, if i were to do a raid ad that would allow me for a 30 to 45 second ad read that you could just click a button and skip through. That would allow me to do something that I would normally not be able to do on this channel, like sponsor a trip or an entire printer build that we would get out of it for literally a minute of me making dumb raid jokes that you can literally click a button to skip. You would quit the channel for something I would not be able to normally do. Didn't Joel say you? Well, I, maybe I need to figure out where was it Col Colton? I don't know. If you're saying no to raid, you're not their audience anyways, and you're gonna skip the ad anyways. Get the bag. 
Yeah, flights anywhere in Canada are expensive. Uh. <laughs> they stole someone's likeness. I'm, I don't, I'm honestly. I'll be honest, outside of the dumb jokes that uh, people make during the raid ads that I skip anyways, I don't know anything about raid. Uh, I ain't looking up flights to Hawaii. No, that way. So I wouldn't mind doing something like Audible or like uh, Skillshare or anything like that. That I don't mind. I wouldn't do any NFT. Well, let's be honest. NFT bros don't have money right now for ads. They're, they're not, the NFT and crypto bros aren't doing too good. So those I would pass on hardcore. NordVPN. Problem is I don't do a lot of VOD content. So videos on demand, my, my videos on my channel don't get a lot of views. I know that, they, they just don't. Um, so that's where you get the ad, the sponsor spots or the videos. My videos don't get a lot of views. Um, so I live stream. I, I like live streaming more anyways. So live stream, you get like hello fresh ads where we cook on stream, which I would love to cook on stream. So hello fresh. If you're listening, I'm down for that, but usually you don't get like the, the, the raid or the Nord VPN on live streams. Yeah, at the end of the video. Yeah, you put it either at the beginning or at the end and you just skip it. And you, you have it called out in the in the chapters and you just skip it. And I have no problem. Like, as somebody who makes videos, I know how much time goes into making a video and like, you know, the equipment. And if you're doing YouTube full time, like having a sponsor spot, like I, I roughly know what they charge and what they pay. Um, like a sponsor spot can be a big difference in like being able to afford to do something on your channel or, you know, for some people like make a paint, like actually afford the rent for the month. So I have no problem if, you know, content creators do ad spots. Like it is what it is. Just do it in a way that doesn't interfere with the normal content. It's an ad. Sell the printers. I don't want to sell my printers. Although we may do something with all the commercial printers that I'm starting to get. Because let's be honest, outside of like testing them for a bit, then they go and collect dust. When is streaming on Twitch be more profitable? No. It would be horrible. It would be career suicide for me to go to Twitch. I have an audience here. I, I'm live with 420 nice people on YouTube right now. If I were to go to Twitch right now, I'd have nobody. My entire audience is on YouTube. All my memberships, uh, Patreon supporters, everything is YouTube. Plus, I do a lot, a lot of my videos, a lot of these live streams that I do get viewed months later. On Twitch, it's what, three weeks and they delete your VOD. And it's horrible searching for stuff on Twitch. And no, I'm not gonna stream on Twitch and then upload it to YouTube after, no. I believe Twitch, if, if, if you do live content that is only viewed live and afterwards, whatever, I think Twitch makes a little bit more sense, especially for like the IRL and gaming stuff. But for like tech stuff like this, where people are going to continuously watch it down the line, I think YouTube makes a lot more sense. You can restream it. Every single person I've talked to about it or has done a thing about restreaming where you stream to both at the same time, it's not worth it at all. Nobody big does it because it doesn't make sense. Why would you split your audience? Yeah, I won't go to Twitch. If I go to Twitch, it's a, we'll play some video games one night or something. Only print fans. <laughs> we got only benchies. Why would I go to only print fans? It's only benchies. Well, I keep using it. I'm still using it. Like the bamboo is a solid Core XY printer that's enclosed. It prints ABS beautifully. So yeah, I'll keep using it. LTT does. LTT is one of the few bigger channels that do it, but they also stream on float plane too because they don't interact with their audience or they don't interact with their audience a lot. They have somebody like read comments to them. Like for this, if I was talking with you guys having like, we're having a conversation now. Imagine if there was a whole other chat that was completely different from this right now. It, it, I don't think it would work. And I know I'm not going to the printer a lot to watch it print. Cause well, let's be honest, it's a V wheel bed flinger. 
You've, you've seen printers do this a while. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go, like, this kind of stuff doesn't fly on Twitch. Like, let me, let me pull up Twitch. Twitch TV. Ah, oh, it's gonna autoplay something. 3D printing. So if we go on Twitch, type 3D printing. The biggest channel on Twitch right now under 3D printing is Maker Deck with 91 viewers. After that, you got 633. Three. Um, that's it. Five more channels. There, there's nothing. 3D printing on Twitch is dead. There's, there's nothing. Oh, and that's another thing. Twitch um, takes less, takes more of my money. So from ad revenue and memberships, which on Twitch are subscriptions, uh, subs, uh, they take a bigger cut. And then to get the better cut, which apparently they don't even do anymore, you need to become a uh, affiliate. Is it affiliate? Affiliate, yeah. And if you become an affiliate on Twitch, you're banned from streaming on YouTube. Why would I do that? Why would I go to a place that takes a bigger cut of my pie and bans me, prevents me from working anywhere else. Do printer giveaways. No, I won't do that. I, I have no problem giving away the one spool of filament per stream. And occasionally we do do giveaways. Like I know LDO, we do it when we finish a build or whatever. But I don't want to be a giveaway channel. That's not the kind of content I want to do. How's the X1 going? X1's going good. It's not printing right now, obviously, but. Marius, thank you for coming to remember. I'm gonna miss the days when we enter. I will always like, cause I run my stream like, we're, we're, we're going on a tangent. We got, we're gonna do the giveaway in 15 minutes. So if you haven't entered the draw for the filament, um, do that now. No, I, uh, we're going on a tangent cause it's, it's a printer printing. You've seen this a million times. Um, I run my stream like a show. I, I view my stream like a show where it, the, the, I'm trying, that's why I talk a lot during the streams too. Um, when I got into streaming and actually started thinking, taking about it serious, which if you go back and watch some of my first streams, they're bad. But then I like binged on a ton of like, rec like videos on how to be a better streamer and whatnot. And one of my biggest takeaways is you need to assume that somebody is joining your stream every single second. And if they are not engaged or entertained in 10 to 20 seconds, they're gone. So that's why I run music in the backgrounds. That's why I'm constantly talking or as talking as much as I can. That's why I've got all the fun ooh, kooky camera angles is because if somebody joins your stream and if they don't get grabbed right away, they're, they're just gonna leave and they're never gonna come back. So you need to run it like a show. That's why I have chat on screen. That's why I'm talking to you guys throughout the whole thing. That's why it takes me longer to build a printer than some other people because I'm trying to make the whole thing an entertaining thing and we got 400 people here, so kind of working, I guess. So. Are you not entertained? I hope you're entertained. Gary, $5 cheers, keep up the great content, thank you. Uh, I'm a student and wouldn't sub on Twitch. I'm sub here just because the $2. Well, that's another thing. On YouTube, you can have different tiers. On Twitch, it's $5. Here I have the $2, I got the $5, and I think 10 or 15, I can't remember. I mean, I could put a $50, you know, Saudi oil prince whale tier if somebody's loaded and really wants to. I, I, I could do that. You have that option on YouTube. Twitch, you don't. It's like 5, 15, and 30 or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you need to make it entertaining. That's why, you know, you, you have to change things up. Like, if you just sit there and just build a printer in the quiet, it's no offense. People do it. I watch some of those streams and nothing against them. Um, but you, you need to, if you're trying to be a streamer, you have to be engaging. You can't just sit there and build a printer in the quiet, which if you're just doing that as a tutorial, yeah, that's fine. But if you're trying to make it a regular thing, you gotta, you have to act differently. It, if, you know, I stream three days a week, I put out nine hours of content a week, um, live streaming. You have to, you have to be engaging. <laughs> the pay my mortgage tier. <laughs> Maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll set up like a 50 or hundred dollar tier <laughs> and just see. Uh. Have I done repair streaming? Um, I've done, I, we, this is stream. Oh my God. I checked the other day. I think this is stream 171 or 172, like official stream in two years. 
um, is 171 or 172. So I've done printer repairs on stream. I've built pretty much all these Vorons on stream. Um, that's why I kind of do shows now. So like next Friday, for those who haven't joined the Discord, link in the description, join the community Discord. There's a channel there. We're going to do monthly contests. And this month's contest is show your printing setup, show your printer room or your print where your printer lives. And next Friday on live stream, we're going to go through that channel and we're going to take a look at everyone's printer setup. We're going to pick some winners, some losers, and people are going to win some stuff. So there is a missing the matter hackers affiliate link in the description. I got to check it. It might be broken. I got to double check. Is there a Prusa XL tier at 100? The Big Papa Joey P needs his money tier. Oh, I'm not looking forward to the day I get the bill for the XL. The larger streams run so fast. I'm surprised this chat is relatively uh, not as crazy as some other chats. Uh, any opinions on like a Core XY IDEX? Um, Eddie the Engineer. Um, the Tridex. Um... It's a it's a Voron Trident that's IDEX. That is a thing. You can do you can do IDEX with Core XY. Uh, Sam, thank you for coming to remember. The holes on my deck panel won't line up with the bed extrusions. On what machine? I like Joel's streams. Joel, actually, I really like Joel's streams. Uh, his chat is pretty fast. Um, I think it's, I don't know if it's because there's a lot of people have side conversations in Joel's chat, which that's just kind of the nature of it is. It's, I, I, I think because I interact with the chat directly more throughout the stream, the conversation is more directed. Whereas if a chat's kind of left to its own devices, people just start chatting and it's a, it goes by quicker. Watch, ask where you're from and watch chat go oh, crazy. Oh, I've done that before. I've told everyone to say hi and then we just get. But we're having a good chat here, so I don't want to bury it. Big Papa Joey P here as you're getting an XL, you might find there's suddenly a huge discount. I've talked to Big Papa Joey P. There's he gave me he put me in a headlock at Murph. Um So he, he knows I have an XL on order and no magic discount code has appeared out of the ether yet, unfortunately. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, people are talking. <laughs> he flew, okay, so for those that don't know, uh, Joseph Prusa was at Murph. He flew in the Saturday or the Friday night at like 8 or 9 p.m. to Chicago drove to Murph, was there all, most of the day Saturday, and then flew out that night. So like in the middle of the day, I just walked by him and he was walking around like, you, you're, you look tired, man. He's like, it's 1.30 a.m. for me right now. And this was like three in the afternoon. So yeah, he literally just flew in for one day at Murph and was out like, I think he was in the States 24 hours. Will there be an extra packet of gummy bears? I don't know. Build a tool changer machine for print reductive design. Okay, so I have no plans to do tool changer. Build a tool changer. Um, I have an XL, a Prusa XL, which is a tool changer, and I'm getting the dually, the two headed one. Um, and that is on pre order, so I do have that. Um, I probably I would like to build a Tridex, one of Eddie the Engineer's Trident IDEX machines. I do want to build one of those. Um, but in terms of like an off the shelf tool changer, no. Um, because tool changers, you need really good precision, and I think that's better served from a kit. Something with machine components type thing. So. Someone was asking if they have XL clones yet. <laughs> I think Prusa still only has one XL. Um, think about it, the Idexion independent dual extruder on X-axis because the Well, yeah, you could do an I I I I I D Y I I I D. You could do an I D. I how do you I D E Y? 
you could technically do it on the y axis it depends on i mean let's be honest i could pick this machine up turn it 90 degrees and then the axis would change to your it's all a matter of perspective right like right now okay here's my x-axis there's my y okay well now here's my x-axis there's my y-axis it's a matter of perspective there is zydex Ooh. Well, if I was going to do anything for, if I was going to modify, see, I'm really, I, I was going to put, turn uh, the Trident into an Idex because that's a 350. But now that I printed a bunch of stuff for the, the, the Mandalorian armor on it and the 350 came in really handy, um, I don't want to lose the build volume of that machine now. So it would be a custom machine. I, it, I, it would be a machine I build for soluble support, which the problem is I want to try the ABS and hips thing. The problem is Lemonoin or Limion or whatever the heck that stuff is called. Lemioni. Lemioni. How, how do you pronounce that? Uh, not limestone cleaner. D Limonene. Nimini? Limonene? Limonene. Isn't it fun when you type something and your hands were off one row of keys and it just bleh. So the problem with limiting me is um, if I want to buy some, because I'm like, oh, I'll play. I've got hips. I've got ABS. I've got an IDEX machine. Let's have some fun. Um, it, it's like an absolute pain to find in Canada. Like. Like Amazon Canada, Nimininuning. It's like $111 for like four liters of this stuff. And as far as I'm aware, it's like one time use. Like you can't reuse it. So. Yeah, it, it, it's $95, $111. Like, like one gallon of it's $143. Like. Yeah, um, Goo Gone. Is Goo Gone the same? What's in Goo Gone? Goo Gone. Let's buy a jug of Goo Gone. How much is a jug of Goo Gone? What is the main ingredient in Goo Gone? Oh, it does. Petroleum distillates. D. Limonin. Yeah, well, maybe Goo Gone will work. pure acetone you mean this stuff goo gone has limited amount yeah so i don't know if it has enough to actually dissolve anything so i think i have goo gone upstairs i could try that because i i kind of want to play around with it now because like the bamboo tool changer enclosed or um ams enclosed i can i could do it but goo gone works Can I buy a gallon of goo gone? So not goo off, goo gone. Citrus hand cleaner. Yeah, I'm so, it was funny because like when I got this, I was like, hey, I'm going to try ABS and hips. Let's do it. And then I looked how much D, d liminum, liminum was and I was like, yeah, no, no, that no. What lube do you use on the small bearings under the filament grabber in the extruder? I, I don't know. 3DX Tech, Liquid Tech, Aqua Tech X1. Okay, let me. You have to remember, I'm in Canada, so a lot of times when you guys recommend stuff to me, it's either stupidly expensive to get it here or I can't get it up here. Um, $90 a spool. <laughs> Why is all the good shit so much? 500 grams for $90. <laughs> I have some PVA. I don't know. What's the cheap stuff that the PLA support stuff? Uh, uh, I'm 
We've got to know how do Canadians and ABCD, EFG, HRJ, LMNOP, QRS, TUV, WX, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs, next time won't you say one thing. But it's probably regional. PVB, PBA? Okay, I've got whatever. I've got a spool of that stuff. I know, 3DX Tech makes good stuff, but it's... That's Polymaker. Does Polymaker make... Dissolvable? I'm sure they make Dissolvable. Poly Dissolve? Here we go. Is a water solid support for PLA, TPU, PVB? Is it for ABS? Ooh. Uh, this offers, this enables greater design. Dissolves for everything. And you have a perfect. Okay, so what does it dissolve in? What does it dissolve in? Packaging? What? what what does it dissolve in? Water? It dissolves in water? Ooh! Cool. It should say it on there somewhere. It doesn't say it anywhere. Okay, we're gonna do the draw. We got one minute. If you have not entered for your chance to win some filament from Polymaker, they make some Gucci printer food. Um, you have like a minute to enter. Link in the description. 900 people have entered. Jeez. I have 900 entries. 420-ish people. Nice. People in chat. But 370 likes of the smash button. Why you do this? Why? Why? Why you do this? The Z is subject to international sanctions. Well, that's only if you put it on your vehicle. Do you have the support test from the bamboo? Um, the, the it fell apart because I tried to get the little gear out of it. Yeah, so it like, if you're wondering how good, like the support worked really good. Like you can see the inside there. But when I tried to get the support out, it all fell apart. Um. And there's the top finish if you're curious. Focus. So that was the top finish off the supported material. But the problem was the material was uh, not dissolvable. So I couldn't get it out without breaking the part. Some people entering more than once. Oh no, they're going off my metrics for how many people join the stream during the stream. That seems about right. Um, and if I catch you entering a draw more than once, like if I if I figure out you got, well, here's the thing, you need a Google account. So yeah, people can multiple enter. I can't really verify that. Um, we, we could move to uh, what Eventbrite or whatever that other service is, but even then I think if you have multiple Google accounts, you can just enter. If I catch you, I'll just ban you from the channel and the Voron Discord and my Discord and any other Discord I have control over or any social media that I have control over, including the Voron Facebook page, we'll just ban you off everything if we we'll find out you are gaming the system. But, you know, I like to hope people are legit and not doing bad stuff. Okay, you got an extra minute. So if you didn't enter, um, you can enter tomorrow. We're building a 3D chameleon. Well, actually, we've got to build. We're going to be putting a 3D chameleon on a Prusa Mini. We're doing that tomorrow. That'll be fun. The doggo is upstairs. The doggo is being... Uh, Mopey, because I'm the only one at home. What are you doing? Oh, there we go. Uh, copying all the names. 500. There's a lot of names. What do you got planned this weekend? Anything going on this weekend, guys? Gals? People? Inanimate objects. Anything exciting? How come there's a... How's the under excursion? Um, it's a bit better now that I turn the temperature up, but it's still under extruding on the infill on this extruder. But this is like the default G code that's on the machine, and apparently it does that. Yeah, he's not out there. Nope, he's moping by the door. Laying by the pool. Nice. Staycation with Valorant. I'm going to play Valorant. Um, isn't Valorant just basically like Overwatch slash TF2 mixed with Counter-Strike? 
Going to Legoland. Ooh, jealous. Okay. So, um... Wow, we have 422 viewers and 432 likes. That's 10 more likes than viewers. I need a number between 0 and 10. Lars, you're disqualified. Joseph, you're disqualified. CS go Overwatch. <laughs> I've never played those games. Eight. I could go with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's spin. Um, the last game I bought was Elden Ring. Um, and before that, it was Cyberpunk. That's it for games I've bought in the past two years. <laughs> Harry! Hopefully, only one person entered um, the draw with the name Harry. Um, that's why I say to put your stream name. Because there are 11 Harrys. So, hopefully, there's no multiple people that just have a stream name of Harry. Harry, you are lucky. You are extremely lucky because not only are you the only Harry that actually just put Harry, you're lucky nobody else put Harry itself. Um, you actually got in right at the buzzer too. You're the second last entry. So congratulations, Harry. And you have no idea how hard it is not to make a joke right now. Okay. Now this is a hairy situation. Yeah. Funny joke. Okay. Congratulations, Harry. You are a wizard. I, oh man, I could've, I could've did the uh, Hagrid thing. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so Harry, you will get a, I'm assuming you're here because you literally entered like one second before I closed it. Um, you'll get an email from me after the stream ends. You fill out a little form, you get some filament. I don't think Sanity can ban me. I don't think she has that power. The Benchy, yeah, this Benchy's looking horrible, guys. I, I don't know what it is with this Benchy. Um, something ain't right. Um, we'll take a look at it tomorrow. So, um, that is it for the stream today. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully this print's done by tomorrow so we can do the, uh, the work on the desk. Um, otherwise I'll try moving the printer off the desk while it's running. We're 6% in. This better not be a 24 hour print. <laughs> Cause I've given, it's going as fast as it can with the default settings. Um, yeah, so tomorrow, um, Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you ring that bell. Tomorrow we're going to put the 3D Chameleon on the Prusa Mini. Um, and then Tuesday's stream, just a little forewarned, Tuesday's stream will be a little bit earlier because I have a dentist appointment. So instead of starting at 2 p.m., we're actually going to start at noon Eastern. Uh, so two hours earlier than normal. Um, I think the, the Australians will be happy or something, I guess. I don't know. Um, needs more Clipper. Every, you can't fix everything with Clipper. It works on a lot, but... Uh, so yeah, we're gonna end it there. Shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament that we gave away. Congratulations, Harry, for winning that spool of filament. For everyone who donated to the channel, became members of the channel, or gifted memberships, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create, without your continued support. You make this all possible. Um, it is Friday. Yeah! I'm gonna go pick up the little guy from daycare, figure out some lunch. Um, dinner. 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 Yeah. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Cheers. Oh, and uh, thank you, Soval, for sending this printer for testing evaluation review. Words and opinions are my own. I haven't been paid for anything. Not signing a contract. Blah, 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 blah. I'll post pictures of the print when it's done on Twitter. Make sure you follow me at 3 p Nero. Bye.